thanks to the uh, the media for for joining us for this session. Uh, we've passed out uh, this uh, four-page document. If you need additional copies, there are additional hard copies, and they're available um, online as well. I'm Steve Morrison. I'm the senior vice president here at CSIS. What we're going to be reporting on here in the course of this event is an is a conference that really began on Sunday evening with a, a, a dinner and then uh, involved a full day of consultations um, yesterday and then a, a, a concluding meeting today of a very diverse group of Myanmar constituencies um, that came to Washington to gather to talk about malaria elimination as a shared goal. This is unprecedented. This is um, required an enormous amount of effort by three organizations. CSIS is one of three partners in, in putting this together. The second partner is uh, the American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, which is a, professional, a leading professional body in the United States. Fully a third of its constituent members are malaria experts, and its president this year uh, is uh, Dr. Chris Plow. Um, who is with us today and who will introduce our, uh, our, our uh, Myanmar speakers in a, in a moment. The second organization uh, that is partnering with us is the University of Maryland School of Medicine, its newly founded Institute for Global Health. Uh, Dr. Chris Plow is there and uh, Miang Miang Nyunt uh, here with us uh, is also based there and the three of us along with Karen Gorleski the executive secretary, the uh, executive director of ASTMH, have worked very assiduously over many months in pulling this together and um, uh, combining the assets of University of Maryland, ASTMH, and and CSIS. But the real story here is to hear from the uh, a, a representative sampling of the um, Myanmar participants who've come together here for this very unusual gathering. And we've tried to capture in the statement that we've shared with you uh, in a page and a half the major points of consensus, the major findings that emerged from this session. And, um, and so those, those are there and, and our speakers uh, uh, who Chris will introduce momentarily, uh, we've asked uh, four of them to come and, and, and be here. Uh, we've asked the Deputy Minister of Health to kick things off with a few a few remarks around the process, and then we'll open for, uh, for, for questions from the media for those speakers. So Chris, Chris, would you like to come forward and please, um, please introduce our speakers? Thank you. Good morning. Um, so we'll have uh, four uh, participants from the meeting uh, come up, and if, as I just introduced, if you sort of come up and, and take a seat, that will help the uh, reporters in the room know who you are so they can direct their questions. So we have actually three ministries from Myanmar who have been here uh, at the meeting uh, from the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Defense, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, but we'll ask uh, Dr. Thin Thin Tay, the uh, Deputy Minister of Health, uh, to join the panel, please. Uh, so she'll, she'll lead off with uh, a few remarks in just a moment. Uh, the second speaker is Dr. Tin Myo Nguyen, who is the chairperson of the National Health Committee for the main opposition party, the National League for Democracy. So please come on up. Uh, we will also have uh, here to field questions uh, Saya Ekalu Shui U, who is the director of the Karen Department of Health and Welfare uh, along uh, the eastern side of Myanmar, and then our our uh, fourth uh, panelist is uh, Brigadier General Tin Mao Lang from the Myanmar Director of Defense Medical Services, where he is the Director of the Defense Services Medical Research Center in Myanmar. So please welcome our... Uh... Dr. Thin Thin Tay, if you would uh, please lead off. Good morning, and uh, thank you very much uh, 
that's uh, on behalf of the Myanmar delegations, we have 14 in number, and then I would like to express my gratitude to uh, the CSIS and then University of Maryland uh, School of Medicine Institute for Global Health and ASTMH, and then uh, there's Steve, uh, Chris, <coughs> and Nyai for organizing this event. Uh, that we have a one and a half day. Uh, actually, uh, that we started, as uh, Steve mentioned, uh, we started discussion uh, from the Sunday evening. And then now that we have come to a very important uh, sort of uh, the agreement that we have, a consensus we have made among ourselves. And uh, given that Myanmar is in its very important moment of its transition uh, uh, towards a developed uh, nation, and then now the health, <clears throat> we put it health as a very integral part of the development of the whole uh, population and then development of the other sectors like socioeconomic and then all around development. So Myanmar, we have a national health system and then again now it, is, it has come to a time like uh, we will have uh, come up with a very integrated, comprehensive, uh, sort of our health initiatives, especially this conference is we have a streamline towards the elimination of malaria in Myanmar. And then thank you for all your kind presence with us today. And then so uh, myself and then the other uh, the dignified uh, colleagues uh, that we are happy to join with you here. Thank you. So I think we can simply open up for uh, questions uh, from the room. Please go ahead. Hi, I'm Matthew Henshaw from AAP. I'm interested to, to learn a bit more about Yeah, okay, thank you very much, as you have uh, pointed out that uh, very important issue. And that is the sole reason why we all are here and uh, how to combat uh, the malaria and then leading towards elimination. Then, of course, uh, malaria is uh, endemic in Myanmar, uh, traditionally. And, <clears throat> and over the years, uh, we have bring down the very high morbidity and mortality uh, you know, that I'm not going back to the uh, to many decades ago, but um, you know that within uh, these uh, five years, for example, like in 2013, uh, we have <coughs> malaria uh, morbidity. The case load is around 300, over 300,000 patients with uh, some in some hundreds of the mortality, and then it has been brought down in 2014, become 200,500 patients and plus uh, 92 mortality. So uh, that is that uh, malaria itself is on the decreasing trend, but uh, looking at the, <coughs> the, the border areas, like uh, because uh, Myanmar is a country sharing the very long common porous border among, uh, with other five countries, and then uh, the malaria resistant uh, strain that K13 propeller has been identified in Thailand, in Cambodia, and then it has also identified in then some border areas <coughs> uh, bordering to those countries. But uh, our concern, and also uh, not only at the national level, the regional level concern is we have a high uh, malaria burden. That although mortality number is very, it's getting small, but that we still have a high uh, morbidity, the high many the number of cases, and then so we really need to contain that resistance strain, not come into Myanmar, and then so that is the malaria uh, anti drug resistant malaria containment program has been initiated since uh, the over the years, and uh, but we really need to make it. Uh, sure, it is that drug-resistant malaria strain cannot be spread 
uh, deeply into Myanmar. So that's why now we are on the ongoing process with having some uh, research and then scientific studies that to have come up and to identify how serious the spread of the malaria resistant strain in Myanmar. It is that we, uh, we the, the, the studies are still ongoing, but the almost confirmed situation in the bordering uh, Thailand and then the Cambodia, it is a, we have uh, a collaboration among the greater Mekong subregions, that, uh, the CLMV plus Thailand. So we have a regional initiative uh, have taken already also. I just wonder... Hope it responds to your question. Sorry. I just wonder, Brigadier General Tin Malang, if you would like to mention how the military uh, is mapping drug resistance using some new tools. You, you showed a slide of some recent results. Uh, yesterday. <clears throat> uh, my name is Brigadier General Tim Online, and I'm the director of the Defense Services Medical Research Center the, under the Director of Medical Services. My department is responsible for the, the research and developments for the entire military and for the, the healthcare system, healthcare services, as well as laboratories and uh, all the functions related to the research. Since the malaria problem is very closely connected to the soldier's nature, and we give priority to the malaria control and prevention. Looking at the malaria situation in military, in 2003 there were 40,000 cases hospitalized in all the military hospital. In the same year, we adopted the ACT, which is the Ministry of Health guidelines. And since 2006, we have a very low number of mortality. And in, the two, in 2014, there were only 3,000 malaria cases. In 2003, there were 270 malaria deaths. And in 2014, there were only four deaths. Apparently, malaria is no longer a problem in the military situation. But we found out that since 2006, 2007, there was a decreasing effectiveness of artemisinine derivatives. And then we kept on researching the malaria per se, which is the plasmodium falciparum. And my department is equipped with the genome sequencing instruments. And this year, using this machine, we could identify the chromosome 13 propeller mutation. The same thing happened to be found in Cambodia, which is the area from north, northeast, west, northwest. But we still need to confirm because, you know, despite the appearance of the, the mutated plasmodium falciparum, we don't have any problem with the therapeutic regimens and the mortality and morbidity. The meaning that we all need to go on f to find out that which caused the resistance and what would be the best way to contain the spread of the artemisinin resistant gene. Thank you. And uh, I think uh, Ekalu Shoyu would uh, maybe say a few words about uh, what the KDHW is, is doing on Artemis and resistance in eastern Myanmar. <clears throat> My name is So Ekalu Shoyu. I am the director of the Karen Department of Health and Welfare from Burma. We live in the Karen state, along, especially along the Thai Burma border. And According to the political and conflict, a lot of people become the internally displaced people. And 
as the internally displaced people, they are poor, they are at the mountaining area and the jungle, so they face with a lot of the malaria problem. When we look the the biggest uh, the problems, the health status of the IDP, internally displaced people, we see that the communicable disease is the biggest problem for us. In that communicable disease, malaria is the biggest one. As I said, because of the political and conflict, the government health services cannot reach, become like hard to reach area to our area. <clears throat> so that as we live in the internally displaced people area, we have to find the way to solve the malaria problem as the biggest one. If we look to the malaria, we see that the incidence, the, the prevalence, the prevalence of the malaria rate is the average 11%. We found that since 2003. So from that, we start to provide malaria control program from 2013. And we start with only 1,500 people, and finally we can increase to more than 100,000 people for malaria area, control area, like that. And now in this 2014, we start to study a pilot research of the malaria elimination that is since 2013, 14, like that. So now we are as the ongoing malaria study elimination pilot area in our current state, especially in along the border. Yeah. <clears throat> I think there's a microphone coming. Uh, what's the timeline for eradication of malaria in Myanmar, if any, and what is going to be U.S. contribution? Is it funding or providing technical assistance? What kind of assistance U.S. is providing to us that? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your question. Yeah, the timeline is that tentatively we have agreed upon the uh, actually uh, the national malaria program to, together with our development partners is like uh, now we are moving from uh, the existing con malaria control program to towards the malaria elimination. And then now the by uh, because we need to go in the face by face. Like now control from the pre-elimination that we need some pre, uh, requisite sort of a condition and then uh, the upgrading to the elimination. So by starting from 2014, last year, we started uh, the, the, uh, the formulating the elimination uh, plan. And then that uh, the plan is uh, consolidated in 2015, and then from 2016 through uh, 18, the, we are going to start it out in that some uh, the the regions as a pre-elimination phase. By 2020, is uh, we aiming to have uh, you know the the pre-elimination phase regions will move into the elimination phase, and again that we. Uh, going to expand uh, outreaching uh, to the other parts of the country and by 2025 and then so we aim to have uh, the malaria elimination and we have uh, some common goal of the universal we have uh, uh, the Vision uh, 2030 National Comprehensive uh, Development Plan in which the National Health Plan has been formulated. Again, universal health coverage also targeted uh, uh, reaching uh, to be reached by 2030 and also malaria elimination, not eradication, elimination also by 2030 that we aim to have the, uh, the, to cover the whole country. I think the fanning. Oh, okay, <laughs> the fanning is uh, the 
uh, it is a kind of a combination. Yeah, a combination. For example, uh, we have uh, three MDG, uh, you know, the, the seven uh, EU countries and USAID and the US uh, contribution, uh, it's also uh, the, the part of the huge funding. And the, the President Malaria Initiative, and also we have some funding. I can provide you some exact numbers in later. Yeah, and uh, some other findings are Bill and Melinda Gates also. Yeah, we have a variety of uh, the U.S. support. And then so from this conference, because we, we are very ambitious, and then but it is a necessity uh, to realize our target successful by 2030. And also uh, that we do believe uh, we will have a very systematic, efficient utilization of the existing funding and also more domestic as well as international contribution will come over the uh, years in future. Maybe I can just amplify that uh, one of the main points that came up in uh, yesterday's discussion was that malaria elimination is and must continue to be very much a country-owned, uh, country-led process. And by country, we agreed that we meant the entire country, not simply you know one ministry or, or uh, you know one one institution. Uh, and so the role of the U.S. is very much uh, in in supplementing the financial support from the the government through PMI, through Global Fund, uh, as well as, as helping with technical support and training, uh, some of which has been done in this country, but the vast majority in Myanmar. Yes, Dr. Mia from, is from uh, PMI, as well as uh, Bernard Nalen from, uh, from PMI in the room, so, yep. Go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, what would you say is the single largest obstacle to achieving universal access to malaria treatments? Is it um, sort of resources at the national ministerial level? Is it issues of um, infrastructure and access to rural places? Um, or is it concerns about uh, conflict in, in some places that makes it difficult to uh, reach vulnerable populations? If you had to name one thing, what is the the largest challenge in terms of uh, distributing malaria treatments to everyone who needs them. Yeah, Thanks. Would you just mind identifying yourself? Yeah, sorry, Michael Igo with DevEx. Okay, uh, thank you again. Uh, whenever we were asked about our challenges or priority uh, that we have, if we have to find out one, it will be a one A, B, and one C or something like that. Because one, uh, because given our, you know, the very diverse uh, geographical sharing, and then it, the geography itself, it's a, a challenge to us. Now, at the same time, uh, you know, because previously it is a control program. Yeah, it has been uh, the implemented for decades already. We have come up with the very success, even achieved the MDG goals. But the resistance ring has uh, come up, and then so we are now uh, the uh, you know the in a sort of uh, we considered our effort and uh, to make it very uh, taking urgent action uh, to combat and to contain. Like so, at that point of time, the existing uh, capacity of the existing uh, the service provider, the not only in the ministry, the among all other stakeholders, it's, it becomes a challenge. And also, the, of course, resources. Yeah, because the malaria uh, elimination is much different from the, uh, the control program. Yeah, in terms of control, now we controlled it very well. But uh, to eliminate, uh, we intend to have a very ambitious sort of, um, you know, the, the zero transmission and so on and so forth. And then, of course, uh, for next 15 years, is uh, we need a lot of resource, yeah, uh, resource problem. And so, and uh, again, now the given the uh, you know the showing the evidence of now we are working in a very. Uh, sort of a multidisciplinary approach because uh, to have a success uh, for the malaria elimination is that we need to ensure the inclusive uh, sort of uh, the contribution by all stakeholders, uh, it becomes a necessity.
Yes. Can I ask, um, Matthew Pennington from AP, can I ask um, how big an obstacle is ongoing conflict in the border regions to, to combating malaria? I mean, are you able to um, provide malaria medications where there's still fighting going on? At the conflict area before 2012, we can find, we can purchase the malaria medicine from Thailand side. That is especially for our area, local area. We call the current state, especially along Thai Burma border. But after 2012, we get communication with the Ministry of Health and some of our stakeholders, our partners, we start to receive malaria medicine from the Ministry of Health supported. So our challenge for the malaria medicine is just for the transportation. Because of mountaining and the forest, we carry the medicine in the backpack with people. We cannot transport with car and other. Only people carry with the backpack. So the medicine come from the city to the border and go to the village like that. Yeah, I might just add that uh, one of the other uh, partners in the room yesterday who's not here this morning is uh, from the Chinese Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the China CDC. And that's another example of what we were doing yesterday in this, uh, in this meeting of agreeing to work together for the, the common effort of eliminating malaria. China CDC works both with the Myanmar Ministry of Health, but also with some of the independence organizations uh, in some of the, the conflict and post-conflict areas. Um, so that's that kind of uh, deciding that we're going to work together whatever else is happening in, in terms of uh, conflict and, and politics that, uh, that we're trying to accomplish here. No, we always try to find a way, uh, you know, if we cannot reach any conflict area, and then who can, who can reach that area or uh, which organizations will be accepted by the local area. And then so we walk through uh, in that nature. And then I do believe, because like uh, the, the, the Chris mentioned, the, we already have started collaborating with the China CDC, and also we work through uh, the international NGO who has very good uh, communication in all those conflict areas. For example, like uh, HPA and uh, CPI in Kachin State, and then in Shan State, Myla, Wat region. And then so the national program is uh, collaborating with the, all those uh, organizations to make it happen, uh, to ensure they have access by the ITP uh, people in the conflict areas. In fact, uh, professionally, I'm a surgeon, but I have to lead the National Health Committee of the main opposition party, NLD, who is going to contest in the coming election on 8th November. I present here just to have this so-called the political commitment that whatever the problems and whatever the challenges we work together with the government, and here we have some of the members of the parliament, military, and also from the ethnic health organizations' representatives. So in fact, we are always 
watching and wants to help about the so-called the, the problems in dealing with the, problem, uh, the projects like malaria elimination. So I think when I have an opportunity to talk about this, I'll go more in detail. But at present, I think I'm quite satisfied with the answers of the Your Excellency, Deputy Minister, Brigadier General, and uh, my colleague from the ethnic organizations. Thank you. Thank you, Michael Igo again. Um, can you talk about civil society? Are civil society organizations playing a role in sort of bridging these divides between, um, you know, different constituencies and, and different um, parties? Uh, is there enough civil society capacity in the country to uh, play a significant role in, uh, in this malaria issue? Thanks. Who would like to take that? Go ahead. Yeah, of course, uh, as I earlier mentioned in my statement, like uh, the all-inclusiveness, it's a government policy, and also it is a necessity to make things happen and successful, and uh, the same thing in the malaria elimination, and so also for the other health initiatives and an outcome. And then we just finished our Myanmar Health Forum uh, last week, uh, we have a uh, very good, the, 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 the theme of the forum is the investing in health and then, uh, you know, the, uh, through focusing on the people-centered development. And then the whole forum is uh, before the forum that we have uh, 300 people from the various CSOs have a three days workshop and then they have come up with some visors. And then although we have uh, the, some of the CSOs consent in the various health initiative, you know, the, we always try to extend and expand their inclusiveness. Yeah, not only CSO, and then all the, the faith-based organizations, CBO, UN, INGOs, local NGOs, and then even the community people should be part of our health initiative, especially for the malaria elimination. It is really important because we need to meet, uh, although we can ensure for the availability of the services, but the uh, acceptability and the, the readiness for the health-seeking behavior of the community is also very important that we need to meet in the middle uh, the, between the two ends, so this uh, we always try to include everyone in the country and become uh, they have a role to play. Would anyone like to add to that? Uh, I think uh, regarding this uh, CSO role, now we notice that we are in the condition where we have to depend also on the, some of the implementation of the CSO in our country compared to the, uh, uh, the previous years. So we really appreciate about the CSO, especially working in the, some conflict areas, like as you mentioned, Rakhine State and Kachin States. So sometimes as opposition party, if we want to work in these conflict areas, we have to start talking with the authorities and also with the, the CSOs who are working there. And it is very helpful, uh, especially for the opposition party. Thank you. Bridget Testimony with Bernas. What do you all think was the biggest hurdle that you overcame this week during your discussions? The biggest hurdle that we overcame this, this week during our discussion. I think there are two parts. One is the technical, and one another is the policy and the principle. What I understand is the gain, what you gain during the discussions. You mean that? What your questions? Yeah, of course. Because I think 
It is the ever first term where we have this opportunity to discuss among the diverse groups, like from even from the three ministries, like Ministry of Health, Ministry of Defence, and Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and also from the three various ethnic groups, member of the parliament, and the main opposition party, myself. So here I want to show and want to develop a model or the practice, so-called the, the dialogue, which we have to admit that this type of the culture where we used to solve the problems by dialogue and frequent meetings, where we can gain more trust and confidence and we share the experience, information, knowledge. And especially in a condition like our country, there are so many conflict areas. So, but we are going for this so-called the malaria elimination program. But still, we have to solve with the other factors. Because we have to admit that the political weather umbrella is very important in our country like us. So if we can bring in one table talking or discussing uh, with uh, so many diverse groups, like I already mentioned, then we can go on, we can forward with how we are going to implement in our country in the very near future. So even this morning, we noted that whoever win the election, uh, win in the coming election, this group, so-called the Malaria Elimination Program, or even if we can form a committee, will go on, because there will be still this disease in our country which really threatened. Because from the uh, opposition party, our policy was drawn, and then we, for the communicable diseases, we mainly for the uh, malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV, which really threatens our country still. So I think uh, uh, by bringing all these diverse groups here, facing each other, discussing, debating, and the, we have a very optimistic view that we can overcome all these challenges and will gain our objectives. Thank you. Would anyone like to add to what was most difficult? For me, it's not difficult. I would like to echo my brother, Sia Uti Mewin, said, uh, you know, that I used to uh, tell my colleagues uh, from the various organization and the, uh, the, the, my colleagues within ministry is that whenever we have a problem and then bring it to the table, and then sit together, get dialogue, and get a consensus, and then move forward. That is our motto. And then so uh, I don't see it is uh, not a very big problem as long as uh, we can have uh, shared our thoughts and then align our vision, align our intervention, leverage the resources, and then share the credit most importantly. Yeah, I'm very positive. David. David Cohn from the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Where would you like this dialogue to be in five years? Where would you like the dialogue to be in five years? Where? where? Not, not where, but how would you like it to grow? Yeah. Uh, in a few minutes ago, yeah, we have that discussion. And then starting from the early morning this morning, and then so what will be the next step the after the conference? That is most important and a practical point. And then so we have come up with the, uh, the, the very the draft idea, but it is a usual practice, is uh, to form a steering committee as soon as we go back home, and then the under which the real uh, practical uh, group is a working group, and then even a working group will cover all the sort of uh, various representative from the uh, various constituency. And then uh, we even thinking and discussing about having an extended uh, working group. 
and then because the uh, working group will need to uh, you know the meet very frequently and the extended working group we will cover some representative from the uh, the, the organizations uh, from neighboring countries even so that is a very first step and I think it is very uh, practical point that uh, we can make it happen very soon yep uh, who's got the microphone <laughs> all right thanks um, is there any group um, that was not part of this conversation that will need to be sort of part of this effort or part of future conversations um, if these malaria elimination goals are going to be achieved? Is there any um, constituency or uh, uh, group of people that, that you'll seek out after this to try to bring them on board as well? Of course, because it is, uh, since the conference is taken place in the U.S., this is a very small representation for the whole country. And of course, even this morning, uh, that we try to include in the statement that, that you have in your hand is uh, we come up with the uh, broad participation. We wanted to see it as a broader participation. Yeah, and then the, all, uh, the, the, the whole idea is based upon the all-inclusiveness. I might just add that uh, the World Health Organization wasn't physically here, but uh, sent a communication and we're very much involved with the planning. Uh, likewise, the uh, Global Fund uh, had to, uh, was unable to attend at the very last minute, but we're very much uh, involved on the, on the partner's side. And then uh, there were efforts made to get more than, than uh, just three of the many uh, ethnic groups represented there. There is a, a, a coalition of the ethnic health organizations that was represented here, but obviously going forward, all these groups will be very important to be included. Uh, we discussed this issue this morning, and then we have our three colleagues from ethnic health organizations, but still we need to invite more. In fact, uh, practically speaking, we have more than 100 different ethnic groups, but still some of the major groups, and three are here, sitting, discussing. So uh, we need to have this more uh, participate to, to invite the, the more of ethnic major groups because so-called the title of so-called the malaria elimination, we have to work in these areas. But at the same time, we have to go parallel with the somewhat like a ceasefire political dialogue, which really push forward for a country. So we strongly believe that if we can start this type of the model, all inclusive and inviting all the stakeholders of a country, and then we strongly believe that we can go forward. At the same time, we also need some of the international uh, organizations, I mean the, the, the expert opinion, laboratory service, the technologies, and then even including the funding is also important. So, but anyhow, we are quite optimistic about this meeting. And then I think the next time, I hope the meeting will be probably in our country where we can provide more participants, more organizations. And since this is the stage of the so-called the reform, where the election is drawing near, I think all the stakeholders, the government, the parliament, the military, the ethnics, political parties, CSO, would agree about this uh, elimination of malaria program. Thank you. And I would just add that we, as we mentioned, we've had three ministries here, health, defense, and foreign affairs. And uh, part of the discussion was how important it is to uh, going forward include ministries of finance, ministry of planning, other, other very key ministries in having a, a national malaria plan. So I think we'll take one or two more questions. If there are still any more questions, then we better let people catch their, catch their flights home. Any, any additional questions? Okay, Steve, any closing 